Hi everyone, I'm Claire Sauer. I am the pastor of Jones Memorial United Methodist in Eastridge. And I am here with you this Wednesday evening for uh, sort of a midweek study and devotion time. And this is the first one of these I've done here. I know you all um, had some of these with Pastor Eric, but I am excited to be with you now and to do this. And um, what I've decided to do for about the next eight weeks and I hope you all will enjoy this since we're uh, social dis distancing, since we're not allowed um, to greet one another face to face really so well right now. Um, I just wanted to, to offer a bit of myself through this time as a way for you all um, to learn a little bit more about me. And so what I'm going to be doing uh, for, for about eight weeks or so is sharing with you um, some of my favorite Bible passages. And I want to do this um, so that you can learn about me and you can um, learn a little bit about my, my passions and my call um, as I share these Bible passages with you that I love. Um, and I'll not only share with you why I love them, but also teach a little bit about the passage as well. And then, you know, after, after I'm done going through these ones that I like, if, if there are um, if you all are enjoying this and there are passages of scripture that you really love and um, you want to share those with me and maybe a little bit about your story, we can dive into those as well. Um, before we get into that, though, just kind of a little bit of housekeeping, a few announcements um, I wanted to make you all aware of. Uh, this time is not live, so I'm not live with you right now. Um, but if you have prayer requests that you want to share, you can... Um, so that we can pray with you on Wednesday evenings. You can call the church office. Um, that number is 624-6073, uh, or you can email me. My email address is revclairesauer, R-E-V-C-L-A-I-R-S-A-U-E-R, -E -E at gmail.com. If you get those requests in to the office or to me by 3 p.m. on Wednesday, I'll share those here on the video if you would like that. Or you can also share during this time in, in the comment section and the folks that are watching here with us, um, they can also be in prayer uh, for you and with you. Um, also, just like I said, a few more announcements here. Um, we are uh, still not gathering an in-person worship at the moment, but we are trying to um, gauge where people are and what they're feeling about that. So there's a survey that went out just today um, it's linked in the messenger, the weekly messenger, and we're, we're just asking every person who's 13 and, and older to complete that survey once um, by July the 19th. And so I'm so thankful for your willingness to share um, your thoughts about this and everything that's going on right now and, and coming back together in in-person worship. So I invite you, if, if you want to take a look at that and fill that out, we would really appreciate that. Um, this, the staff is working really hard um, and our leadership um, to figure out how and when um, to come back and we would love your input on that and uh, once we've had an opportunity to look at those survey results then we'll begin uh, making some decisions and we'll let you know as we move forward in this process um, and also just a quick reminder that um, virtual VBS and the virtual youth mission um, are coming up next week that starts uh, the VBS on the 19th and the mission on the 20th. So you, if you've got kids or grandkids, nieces, nephews, neighbors, whoever that might enjoy being a part of that, um, there's information about those things in, in our messenger. Um, so this morning, or excuse me, this evening, um, we are, um, I want to share with you my first favorite passage of scripture. And uh, it comes from John chapter 11, and I will read this uh, to you. I'll read this passage of scripture, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So as I said, this is John chapter 11. If you want to grab your Bibles and read along, I really like to read uh, from the CEB version, but there may be other versions um, that you like. Um, so whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you want to uh, read, however you want to follow along, I'll be beginning in verse 17. So this is John chapter 11, beginning in verse 17. And I'm going to read through verse 26. So it says, When Jesus arrived, 
he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was a little less than two miles from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to comfort Martha and Mary after their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, while Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? So I'm gonna give you just a little bit of context on this passage of scripture before I tell you why it's my most favorite um, passage of scripture in the whole Bible. So here's what's going on in this passage. Jesus' good friend, Lazarus, has died. He was sick. Um, and, and he has passed away. And while he was sick, Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, called for Jesus. I mean, it had been days earlier that they called for Jesus. Lazarus was alive, but he was ill. But for some reason, uh, even though Jesus had this message from Mary and from Martha, he, he didn't go to Bethany right away. He didn't drop what he was doing and travel there, even though Lazarus was a friend of his. He delayed his, his trip from Jerusalem. And so because he delayed his trip, when he arrived in Bethany, Lazarus had already died. And so that kind of raises this question of like, okay, well, if Jesus hadn't, if Jesus hadn't delayed his trip, if he had gone immediately when Mary and Martha called for him, would Lazarus have lived? And that's what Mary and Martha believed. They believed that if Jesus had come when they sent for him, that their brother would, would still be alive. And so when Martha sees Jesus coming down the road, she's, she's kind of upset. She's really upset. Of course, she's lost her brother. And she, she runs out to Jesus and she says, look, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Now, the part of this passage that I didn't read is where Jesus explains to um, his disciples that whatever happens in this situation, it will be for God's glory. And so when when Martha runs to Jesus in the road and 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 basically accuses him and says, you know, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. What we heard, what I read, um, is Jesus' response to her, and this gets into to. Um, the, why I like this passage so much. Now, now Jesus says, even even now, you know, your brother will live. And Martha's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, like yeah, he's going to rise on the last day. Sure, right. Um, and then Jesus responds to that. And this is why, you know, a lot of people may think this is why I like this passage, but it's actually something different. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Which is just really just this, this incredible message that life is, is not... Um, in, in the way that we live here and now, it's not something that we wait on that we'll be raised to um, after we die. Uh, but life at, at its simplest, most basic form is, is just in Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. But the reason I like this passage is because of what Jesus asks after he says that. And I can kind of imagine him standing there on the road and looking at Martha, and he, he says, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. And he goes on, and then when he's done, he says, do you believe this? That's why I love this passage, because Jesus asks that question, and in that question, right, is life. You either answer yes, and you experience this life, or you hesitate, and maybe you miss it, right? Do you believe this? It's a challenge and a question I like to ask myself every day. I think we should all ask ourselves every day. Do I believe this? Do we believe this? Do we really put our trust and our faith in this truth of life in Jesus Christ and, and even resurrection life in Jesus Christ? 
And then I think the follow-up question to that, and again, this is a question that we should be wrestling with every day, right? So the follow-up question is, how does my life reflect my belief? Okay, so, so not only do we need to be professing our faith and our belief in, in the resurrection of Christ and in the resurrection life that's in Christ every day, but then our lives and the way we live them need to be a reflection of that belief. That we believe there is life in Christ. That we believe there is new life in Christ. And not only, not only that we reflect that, but how, I mean, we need to be looking critically at how our lives do reflect this. And I don't really have an answer for that. I, you know, for each of us, it's different. But I think we're never going to know, right, if we don't ask ourselves the question, do you believe this? Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you live like you believe it? And if you do, how are you doing it? These are the questions I like to ask myself every day, and it's why I just love this passage from John chapter 11. Now that I've shared um, just a, a quick reflect, reflection on one of my favorite um, Bible passages, what I want to do is to move into a time of prayer. I would invite you, if you have some prayer requests, um, some prayer needs, if you have celebrations and you want to share those and you want folks to, to um, move with you in this time of joy or sorrow, if you want folks to be in prayer for you, just type those into the comments there. Um, and when we move into prayer in a few minutes, we'll begin with some silent prayer so that we can be in prayer for you um, and with you and um, as well as some folks that I'm going to name here. So, so there are some um, prayer needs within our congregation right now. Um, and I, I hope that you will um, write these names down and keep them before you, not only in this time of prayer, but... Um, throughout throughout the week. Uh, so many of you may be aware now um, we need to be in prayer for Mark Womack and, and his family. Um, Mark lost uh, his eldest son. He, his eldest son, Mark Womack III, um, passed away on uh, Sunday morning. And um, so we want to be in prayer for Mark and for his family as they move through this time of grief and, and of loss. Uh, we also need to be in prayer for Teresa Stanberry. Um, Teresa fell and, and broke her hip. Um, she's doing okay. There's not going to be um, surgery required, but obviously that's a, a challenge that we want to lift um, Teresa up. We, of course, want to um, continue to be in prayer for Dwayne and for Tina Broom. Um, also want to lift up Barbara and Jean Robbins um, and uh, Allison Martin. Allison's grandmother died um, back in May, but she is traveling right now um, to Michigan where her grandmother lived um, for the services, for the memorial service for her grandmother. So keep Allison um, in your prayers. Uh, she says her final farewells and, and makes that journey. Um, and we also need uh, to be in prayer for um, Doug Craig and for Tom um, Gillingham. So, um, Hopefully by now you've had just a minute if you wanted to add um, some prayer requests, uh, things that are going on in your life, uh, folks that you know of who, who need to be lifted in prayer right now, and you, you type those in. Um, and of course, uh, they are um, before God as well, without us even having to say. Um, God knows those needs um, with our, without us even needing to ask. And so now we're going to enter into a time of prayer. And as I said, we will begin with a time of silent prayer. I hope you will take a minute to read um, the requests that folks have typed in there um, and, and others that, 
that may you may have silent requests we will just name those before God in this time of silence and then I will close us out with a word of prayer will you bow with me Almighty God, as we come before you this evening, we come um, as a people uh, drawn together by your spirit. And we know there are these folks in our congregation, in our community, um, around the world who are facing particular challenges right now. Maybe it's grief and loss. Maybe it has to do with, with some health or some medical difficulties. Maybe there's challenging decisions that have to be made. We lift these folks to you, God. We place their need, their burden, into your hands and we ask God that you would walk beside them that you would shoulder this load that they carry that you would strengthen them in their weakness that you would give them wisdom to know how to move forward that you would heal the sick and strengthen the weak and comfort, grieving, bring peace to those who are in the midst of turmoil. And wrap your arms of grace around those who are hurting, maybe feeling helpless, lost, sometimes God the thing folks need more than anything is just to know that they are not alone to know that you are indeed with them and we know God that you have made that possible in your son Jesus Christ we know that your spirit moves among us now and so that is our prayer God that you in your miraculous way would be present with with these folks that we have named these folks whose, whose um, names we've typed, these folks whose names are written in our minds and, and in our hearts, even the people, God, whose names we don't know, but you know them. May your spirit move among them now so that they might know your power, your comfort, your peace in their lives. May they know especially, God, the gracious love of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in his precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that, um, that you all have a wonderful week. If you have prayer requests um, that you want shared, if you... Like I said, if you can email those to me or call the church office, um, I will be sure to include those. Um, and also, um, I wanted to let you know, next week when we gather, we'll be talking about um, Hebrews chapter 11. I don't plan to read that whole um, chapter, so if you want to kind of prep for that ahead of time, you can go ahead and read that sometime this week. Um, I'll just read a portion of it, and I'll talk to you again a little bit about what's going on in the passage and share with you why I love it. Um, so I hope that you will join me again next week, and I look forward to seeing you then. I look forward to meeting, um, meeting all of you in person, I hope, really, really soon. God bless you, and have a nice evening. Bye.